stories today. I'm going to read a nice little story to you. Nice little bedtime story. Get ready. One evening after dinner, my boyfriend Owen was feeling very mischievous. Your bump is very big for just one little baby. Why did it send me out of my drive? What the fuck is going on here? That's not very cool, Pogger's epic gamer moment. I'm not gonna lie. What the fuck? We'll be back in. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, you know what? That's fine. We can. Don't worry about it, maybe. Where the fuck is this? I can do it. I can find it. I can get it. Don't worry. Just don't eat. Okay. Okay, there it is. Why would you just say you don't need it? Okay, cool. Probably. Fuck. One evening after dinner, my boyfriend Owen was feeling very mischievous. Your bump is very big for just one little baby, he teased with a devilish smile, sliding his hand under my maternity dress and gently stroking my pregnant tummy. Maybe there's not really a bear baby. Fuck up. Oh, maybe there's not really a baby in here. I toyed with a nose, smiling. My eyes go blurry and luxuriating in the warm glow left by his hand. Perhaps I'll give birth to a little up litter of furry kittens instead. But Owen rejoined with an impish smirk. It would have been, I have to be a very large litter. And so we are and were laughing and joking. When out of nowhere, the most brutal pain tore through my body, like someone had plunged a knife into my back. I let loose the most, the most heart-rending scream as I grabbed the worktop and bent forward, the pain sweeping across my insides, cutting, stabbing, and lacer lacerate, fuck off, lacer lacerating, as if I had swallowed a load of razor blades. The clock on the kitchen wall, dutifully, counted out the seconds, tick, tick, tick each one stretching out for an eternity as I held my breath, waiting for the pain to ebb the bow away. My husband just stood there, looking like a frightened rabbit caught in the headlights of a car. I could see the pain and worry in his eyes. He wanted to wrap me in his arms, take away my hurt, and make everything better, but didn't quite know how to do it. Once the pain had ebbed away, and I started to relax, he wrapped his strong arm, just the one, around my waist, and helped me onto a chair. I'll be okay, my darling, I panted. <laughs> Still exhausted from the contraction, he pulled up a chair and sat facing me, his knees inside mine, holding my two little hands in his. Um, emphasis on little, I was fourteen at the time. He looked at my big, pregnant tummy with love and wonder in his eyes, then they moved upwards, gazing longingly at, longingly at my breasts. I remember my age, all around, ample and swollen with milk. Tonight, my darling, I answered softly, reading his thoughts. It took me back to the time, nine months ago, when little Megan existed only as a naughty twinkle in her daddy's eye. It was such an ordinary night in the middle of the week that I left the bathroom in my negligee, ready for a good night's sleep. But the look he gave me soon put paid to that. I've never seen such a look of carnal lust in all of my life, his eyes devouring me, so urgent, so demanding, so confident. My whole bot, fuck, my whole body started to tingle as he walked up to me and tore off my nightdress, clasping me, clasping me in, in a tight embrace, teasing my lips, kissing me deeply and passionately. He stroked a finger down my spine, blazing a, a red-hot trail from my neck to my my cossacks. <laughs> and then he, and he started exploring. His hands were were so strong, so confident, so skill skillful with one with one L. They knew all my pleasure zones, stroking, teasing, cuffing, and massaging every inch of my body. Fire was pumping through my veins, and I just wanted him so badly, my body, my whole body. When he laid me on the bed and ravished me, I was totally overwhelmed um, by the force of his desire, so raw and savage, so carnal and lustful. I gasped with pleasure when I felt his finger teasing my little button, desperate for him to give me more. I shrieked with ecstasy when his rod... What... When his rod of seal reached to the ramparts, forcing an entry inside me. Harder, deeper, faster, he thrust as I squealed louder, feeling every muscle in his body tense as hard as granite. I just couldn't believe his strength and power, and he felt and felt he could break me, but I still wanted him more. 
I started to climb back out of my mind by the intensity of the pleasure and the feral scream I let loose would have frightened grown men in their beds. Wave upon wave, one to a on top of another, I just orgasmed over and over again until I could walk on this on his chest, lift and exhausted. That was the best ravishing he has ever given me, but it wasn't nearly, nearly carnal desire. Underneath those crude animal passions, I glimpsed a layer of softer, finer, more differentiated emotions. Um, fuck, of course there was love. Whole bucketfuls of it, but there was also feelings like gratitude. Um, fucking acceptance, dude, trust, and belongingness. And of course, I felt all these just as much as he did. So after I had screamed with pleasure, and as we both released, I wanted to make the most of what we had done. I wouldn't let him roll over and go to sleep. I held him tight in my arms so I could keep and treasure what we had just shared. After a minute or so, the pain had largely ebbed away, so with his help, I staggered to my feet to make us some coffee. I filled the kettle, flipped the switch, and waited for the water to boil. But before I had the chance to fill the cups, I let out an agonized scream as the pain came back with whiff of vengeance. It was excruciating, like my insides were being ripped out. Owen was very well worried and insisted I lie on the bed. He wrapped his strong arm just the one again around my waist. I- that same sentence, never mind. And I entwined one limb about his neck. With a lot of stopping, resting, and gras gasping with pain, we made it to the top of the bottom- to the bottom- to, we made it to the- to the bottom of the stairs in the hallway. I gripped the sculptured balustrade to the brave my first step when I felt a rush of warm water flowing out of me. I could feel my undies were all wet. Saw a puddle of water on a lovely new carpet and bowed my head in shame. I starting to sob, feeling like a naughty little girl who has been reprimanded for dirtying her pants. And I was, I was fourteen. Hubby saw my distress and covered my face with gentle kisses. Hold on. Um, whispering, don't you worry, baby, it'll be all right into my ear. Um, the stairs were long and agonizing, but finally we hobbled into the bedroom where he sat me gently on on our bed. Our bed. He pulled off my soggy panties, lifted my arms to remove my rosy red maternity dress, and unclasped my generously sized maternity bra. He cleaned my feet, legs, and crotch with a warm soapy towel, and delicately threaded my arms, thought the sleeves of a little nightie, those with the buttons down the front. For hours I lay there, the, the cruel, agonizing contractions getting worse. Owen was sitting on the side of our bed, holding my hand and not really knowing what to say. I could see the pain etched on his face as he watched me, longing to take away my suffering and wanting to make everything all right. Then the contractions stopped and everything was quiet. Owen lay on the bed next to me, stroking my tummy, telling me how special it was. We talked about how the, the, through much of the night about the past, the day we met, that possibly delicious, ravaging that made me pregnant nine months ago, and about our little baby Charlotte. Didn't she have a completely different- wasn't her name like Nicole? I'm gonna lose my spot if I scroll up, never mind. Then sometime in the small hours, the contraction started again. The pain was indescribable, but it was different this time. One moment, I thought I'd, do I'd doing a gigantic poo, holding my breath and gasping, as I could feel all the stretching and singing. Next, I was screaming from the searing and burning down below like a red-hot poker was being shoved up my arse. Owen had a look between my legs and said I was fully dilated, so baby was definitely on her way. Up until now, it had all seemed like a dream. Even the massive big tummy, the wet, soggy panties, the big swollen breasts, and the painful contractions had not been enough to break the spell. But now baby has actually on her way. My cervix was open, and she wanted to come out. It suddenly became very real. We were both so frightened. The changes in my body, like my huge tummy and swollen breasts, which I have mentioned both four times now. My mood swings, gentle and loving one moment, then mean and bitchy the next. The cry, for no reason I would suddenly start sobbing. Was it joy or sadness? Were your confusion or either shame? Are all of them interwoven like in a me emotional kaleidoscope? And the midnight binges, scoffing whole bars of chocolate or opening the fridge, and tearing off a leg of chicken to gnaw on, and all the pain, the incontinence, the vomiting, the blood, and the gore, it was all so savage. And what if something went wrong? Women die and did die in childbirth even in this day and age. But we were excited too. Ever since I was a teenager, I've looked with envy at mothers with their children, that's why I'm 14. I just long to have a little girl of my own, a miniature version of myself, to love and to protect, to share her joy and kiss away her sadness and her pain. 
And when a woman creates a brand new life, one that grows, is fed, loved, and protected in her tummy, it is something magical and mystical that goes beyond what humans can comprehend. It is proof that all the love and creativity, hope and trust, goodness and happiness in the world have not been ex ex extirpated. I would, I would argue to disagree. When I was younger, I used to put just the little, um, uh, just the grain part of a fuck of, um, Lucky Charms in a bowl, and I would put them on the ground, and I would try to eat them and pretend I was a dog eating kibble. Owen was sitting on the le the edge of our bed holding my hand, and I'm sure he was more nervous than I was. He kept squeezing my hand and telling me what a clever girl I am, like I was an animal. It was the only thing he could think of saying, but I still loved him for it. Then suddenly, with one almighty contraction, I pushed and I screamed, and out came our little baby out and all, all in one go. Were they in the house, or were they in the hospital? They were in a house. They were in a, their house. Okay, I will always remember the look of disbelief and wonder on Owen's face when Megan. Fine. Yeah, uh, Megan. They called her Charlotte like one page ago. What the fuck ever. Finally emerged. Like he could simply not believe that a real life baby could come out of the tummy like that. But there was pride as well. He was so proud of me for my bravery and for all the pain and suffering I had endured and for the little girl I had given him. I started to unfasten the fiddly little buttons on my nightdress. And he handed me our baby, that purple, screaming, wiggling, bloody, gooey, yet infinitely precious little bundle. I placed him on my breast, where he was happy and content. Him? Why would you name your son Megan? Okay, whatever. Owen leant over my body, wrapping his arms under my back and around me. He held. Oh yes, he has two arms this time. He held the three of us in one big hug, softly murmuring into my ear, "I love you." I was so exhausted from all that work, sturdy and sweaty. My hair all matted and mangy. I was painful. It was pain. I was painful inside and sticky down below. Oh God! But that was the happiest moment of my life. Okay, guys, that is all for Ready Player Two by Ernest Clyde. Please tune in next time when I read Ready Player Three. I look trick boogly.